Hello, once again welcome to RB Code Crush. Today we are going to discuss about one interesting concept that is the concept of Latin square. So before we go to the formal definition of Latin square, let's consider these diagrams. As we all can see, two squares are given below which can be thought of to n into n matrix. Suppose we take the second square which is 5 into 5 matrix containing 5 colors. Now consider any color and take into account its row and column respectively. You will definitely find the color appears exactly once in its own row and column. So let's examine. For example, if we take the first black color and its corresponding row and column is the first row and the first column. So if we see carefully we will find that black color appears exactly once in its first row and first column or in its corresponding row or column. Again if we consider any other color for example we consider the green color appearing in the second row and third column. Have a closer look and you will find that the green color do not repeat itself in second row and third column that is it appears exactly once in its row and in its column. So now let's come to the definition of Latin square. We have already seen that a Latin square is an n into n array which is filled with n different symbols each occurring exactly once in each row and exactly once in each column. Here are few examples. Just consider this matrix. This is an 4 into 4 matrix. So there are 4 elements present in the matrix. The elements are 1, 2, 3 and 4. Similarly you just consider any element and consider its corresponding row and column. You will definitely not find a duplicate of that element in its own row and column that is it is present exactly once in its corresponding row and column. These are two other examples of Latin square where we are using 3 into 3 matrix and they are having three elements A, B and C and you can see that there are two matrices having same order same elements but having two different arrangements so Latin square can be designed in many ways right but in order to write a code we require to follow a certain pattern so you might be thinking how to form a Latin square there are so many Latin squares possible using a single uh, combination of elements it's very simple and very easy. Firstly, take the order of Latin square. We should take it from the user as input. Next, we should design a one-dimensional array. For example, data is a one-dimensional array which will contain all the n different elements which will be needed by us to design the Latin square. For example, if we are taking the n as equals to 3 that is we are going to design a matrix of order 3 into 3 then the elements used to fill the matrix if you want we can take the elements as 1 2 and 3 these elements will be stored in one dimensional array fill each row of the matrix with these three elements in the order 1 2 and 3. This means that suppose in 0th index of the one dimensional array 1 is stored, in 1 index 2 is stored, in 2 index 3 is stored. Right. So we have to initially design the matrix in such a way so that each of its row is identical to the one dimensional array. We will shift the elements in each row according to the row number. Now the last point 
let's illustrate it in a better way initially I have said that each row of the matrix will be identical to the one dimensional array so the row number of the first row is 0 the row number of the second row is 1 and the row number of the third row is 2 so the row number of the first row is equals to 0 hence elements in the first row will be shifted through 0 places towards left that basically means that in the 0th row the elements will not be shifted okay so it will remain as 1 2 and 3 now if we consider the second row we will mark it as 1 and in this row the elements will be shifted through one place towards left similarly we will do the same operation with the third row that is marked as row number 2 in that we will shift each of the elements two places towards left so we are seeing that the elements in each row are shifted the number of times equal to the row number right so with this much of concept we will go to the coding part so now as you all can see in our program there are two methods or two functions used one is void rotate and the other one is void main void main is a function from where execution starts and void rotate will help us to shift the elements of the matrix in a particular row in order to design a Latin square so now let's first look at void main in void main we use data as the single dimensional array used to store the elements of the Latin square and a will be our Latin square n is the order of the matrix we input the elements in data using the first I loop then by using this nested loop we will design the initial n into n matrix such that each row is identical and having n elements occurring in the same order as in data next I loop helps us to shift the elements of matrix by calling the rotate function so see what are the parameters which we have passed we have passed the rows of the matrix by writing ampersand a of i and 0 n is our order of matrix and i determines through how many positions we have to shift the elements of the particular row and we see the number of shifts is equals to the number of rows in rotate function the outer i loop helps us to shift the elements s number of times the inner loop helps to shift the elements one position towards their left exactly once so let's dry run a bit and see what happens actually now if n was inputted by user as 3 then what would happen in this rotate in this rotate when i would be equals to 0 then a of i and 0 that is a of 0 and 0 would occur that is we are considering the first row of the matrix which is labeled as 0th row right and n is 3 and i would also be equals to 0 so when we go to this rotate function we see that s becomes equals to 0 so ultimately we do not enter into this for loop and finally the first row that is the row labeled as 0th row will have all the elements as it is that is no modifications will be done now when i becomes equals to 1 then a of i 0 will become as a of 1 0 that is we are now considering the second row of the matrix labeled as 1 n as usual is 3 and i is equals to 1 so we go to the rotate and we see that s has become already 1 
so this outer i loop will execute itself once so we see that inside that i loop there is a variable known as stem this stem variable helps to store the first element of the row we are considering then we enter into the j loop inside the j loop you just see each element is shifted exactly once towards its left for example when j is 1 data of j minus 1 will become data of 0 and it will store the data which is presently in position j that is in position 1 that means data of 0 equals to data of 1 again as it is equals to n minus 1 and n is 3 so it will execute two times so one time it has already executed and the second time when it will execute then j will become 2 and data of j minus 1 will become 1 and data of j will become 2 that is in the first in index that is in the second position of the second row will have the third element of the second row we are seeing that this inner loop helps us to shift the position of the elements exactly once towards its left right now as this loop will execute for two times it has already executed we will jump out of the loop and we will see that in the last position of the row in which we were working with that is we were working with the second row so the last position we will now have the element which was the first element previously okay so in this manner again when i becomes equals to 2 then we are considering the third row of our matrix right the third row of our matrix labeled as 2 n is 3 and i becomes equals to 2 so there will be consecutive two shifts right so s has already become 2 so the outer loop will execute for two times and the inner loop will execute now for how many times when i will execute for the first time it will execute for two times the inner loop now again when the i loop will execute for the second time and the final time then the innermost j loop will once again execute for two times that is in total the inner j loop will execute for four times and the outer loop will execute for two times this was a dry run okay and we have uh, simply taken an example of 3 into 3 matrix this can be extended as 4 into 4 5 into 5 6 into 6 anything the mechanism remains the same after that we will return to void main and then we will print out our final latin square now let's see the output gcc latin.c oh, object p yeah now enter the order of matrix now let's for example enter 4 as the order of our matrix enter four different numbers to be used in the square right so let it be 1 2 3 4 see the latin square design is completed the latin square is as follows it is 1 2 3 4 then we have shifted the position of the elements towards its left through 1 that is 2 3 4 1 then two times we have shifted the positions so it has become 3 4 1 2 and finally we have shifted the positions four times or through four places so it has become 4 1 2 3 and so in this manner we have designed a latin square so here we come to the end of our discussion hope you all have enjoyed the new concept please try it out and see what comes to keep updated with more such interesting concepts don't forget to subscribe share and like too. have a nice day